next up is the cosecant function. The cosecant function by definition is one divided by the sine function. This is our first reciprocal function that we're going to look at. The others are going to be secant and cotangent. So what this function basically does is whatever x value you give it, it comes back as the sine value but reciprocates it. So one divided by the sine value. So for example, if I know that the sine of zero is zero, then the cosecant, which is abbreviated CSC, of zero is one over that, which is undefined. Another example, if I say that the sine of, uh, let's say pi over two, let's say the sine of pi over two is one, so that means the cosecant of pi over two is one over that, which is one. So that's how this thing works. It's the flipped over version of sine. And there's unit circle connections, of course, which we're not gonna get into in too much detail right now. In my first three videos for sine, cosine, and tangent, I went into great detail about the unit circle. I'm not gonna necessarily do that right now but you should have uh, a reference angle chart with you somewhere that's going to give you all of your imp important points, right? And I'm getting all of those points by flipping over all of the sine values. All right, so let's just go, few, go through a few right now. We already did zero degrees, but if we do uh, the cosecant of pi over six, right? This is the flipped over version of sine of pi over six. All right, so you take sine of pi over six, which is one half, and you just flip it over. So one divided by a half is two. That's where we get two from. The cosecant of pi over four is one over the sine of pi over four. Well, the sine of pi over four is radical two over two. So you flip that over and you get two over radical two. And that needs to be rationalized, so we'll rationalize that. Two radical two over two, or just radical two, which is where we get that. All right, same thing for radical, or uh, pi over three, you get this. And we already talked about 90 degrees. So uh, let's plot this thing and see what we come up with. We'll just throw some points in here, and we'll see what happens. So we said that the cosecant at zero degrees, or zero radians, does not exist. So I'm going to put a, an asymptote right there. When things don't exist, we want to put asymptotes. And I'm going to try to draw this thing somewhat straight. It's a little challenging. And it's not super easy, but I'll do my best. All right, and we said the next one was the sine of pi over 2. Well, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Right, because it's the up and down direction at pi over 2. That means the cosecant of pi over 2 is 1 over 1, which is also 1. So what I need to do is set up my, my x-axis. I need to label my x-axis. This is called scaling. And this is going to be 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, pi, and pi over 2. So the cosecant of pi over 2 is positive 1. I'll put that right here. So that makes this 1 this 2, this negative 1, and this negative 2. And I'm just graphing one cycle of this cosecant function. It obviously goes on forever. Let's just focus on one cycle of it. Uh, let's go next to uh, the sine of pi. If we look at the sine of pi, uh, that's 0. So the cosecant of pi is 1 over 0, which does not exist. So there's another asymptote right there that I will attempt to draw as straight as I can. All right. So wherever the sine is 0, the cosecant does not exist. All right, so let's look at 3 pi over 2. The sine of 3 pi over 2, well, that's on our unit circle. That's this point down here. So that's negative 1. Remember, sine is the y value. So that's negative 1, which means the cosecant of 3 pi over 2 is 1 over negative 1, or negative 1. So that goes down here. Uh, how about 2 pi? The sine of 2 pi, 
well on our unit circle 2 pi is over here the y value there is 0 so it's sine of 2 pi is 0 which means the cosecant of 2 pi is 1 over 0 or undefined so there's another asymptote again everywhere the sine is 0 the cosecant does not exist alright so we have our three asymptotes one at x equals 0 x equals pi and the last one at x equals 2 pi so those are like barriers where the domain does not exist the x values don't exist the function doesn't exist there so I guess it's probably worth checking out pi over 4 All right, we said that the sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2 and the cosecant is that flipped over so it's 2 over radical 2 if we rationalize like I just showed you 2 root 2 over 2 is just radical 2. So when x is pi over 4, y comes out to be radical 2, which is about 1.4, so a little bit more than 1.4. So I'm going to go up 1 and up to about 1.4. All right, and this is going to be very symmetrical. So at 3 pi over 4, same thing. Right here, we're going to go down to negative 1.4, which is about right here, and same thing over here. All right, so what I'm looking at now is a graph starting to emerge. It's going to get infinitely close to those asymptotes, but never touch them. It's going to go down to that minimum value at pi over 2, comma 1. And that's not very good something like this it's infinitely close to those asymptotes but never touches them over here it goes in the other direction something like that so there you go there is the cosecant function one cycle right one cycle includes the sort of the um, downward or the parabola that kind of looks like that and the one that looks like this, that's all included in one cycle. One cycle repeats itself after two pi units. In other words, this will start to repeat itself. It'll go like this, and then it'll go like this. Same thing in the other direction. It'll go like this, and then it'll go like this. All right? And all together, both graphs are one period. So the period repeats itself every two pi units, just like sine does. The amplitude does not exist because it goes on forever in the up and down direction. The domain is all real numbers except where the asymptotes are. So x cannot be uh, 0, pi, 2 pi. So the way we would write that would just be 0 plus pi times some integer n. Uh, the range, the range is of course the up and down direction so it goes from negative infinity to negative 1 inclusive and from 1 to positive infinity it skips all this y value right in there there are no x-intercepts uh, the maximum you can say that is 3 pi over 2 comma negative 1 the minimum is this point right here pi over 2 comma 1 these are local or relative extrema. So in other words, this point is lower than all the points immediately surrounding it. Uh, the equations of the asymptotes, of course, x equals 0, x equals pi, and x equals 2 pi. That's where the domain doesn't exist because the sine is 0. And these three, again, we'll come back to when we get to our transformation videos. So uh, visually, how does this connect to the sine curve. Well, if you remember the sine curve, the sine of 0 was 0, the sine of pi over 2 was 1, the sine of pi was 0, the sine of 3 pi over 2 was negative 1, and 2 pi was 0. Alright, so it's basically, if you look at it this way, it's a nice reflection. The cosecant and the sine are nice reflections of each other. They come and they meet there and they come and they meet there. And wherever the sine is zero, right here, here, and here, you have the cosecant 
not exist or undefined. So really nice uh, symmetry. If the cosecant goes up, the tan or the sine goes down. If the cosecant goes up, the sine goes down. If the cosecant goes or the sine goes up, the cosecant goes down. If the sine goes up, the cosecant goes down. So there's a nice connection there between the sine and its reciprocal. A little bit better version of this, more uh, exact looking graph is this, right? The cosecant's in dark and the sine is in gray. So you can see that they come together right here. So it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, the secant's going to look a lot like that. It's just going to be 1 divided by cosine. Uh, so thank you for watching.